really enjoyed the Have film. Have a good day? Oh, yes. you enjoyed the film? Oh, yeah, I thought it was excellent. I can't wait to see it again, actually. Oh, great. <laughs> and we just sit back and enjoy it without having to think of questions as well, but no, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, it must be difficult, actually, because you'd hard for you to look at it as a, a straightforward audience member. Yes. Um, anyone, I think, sceptical about the use of 3D in movies, I think, will be immediately <coughs> converted by, the, by this film, especially the breathtaking uh, Gringotts Bank cart sequence. We could really get the thrill of like, being on the carts ourselves, and I thought the illuminated ones, the Dementors, look great. Why did you feel that 3D would work well for the final sort of epic battle that we, we see in uh, Harry, Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 2? David Yates always described the film as operatic um, and we discussed uh, making the previous film um, in 3D or a post-conversion because actually 3D hadn't, when we started preparation and, and early days of principal photography on, on the two parts of Deathly Hallows um, 3D hadn't really arisen as a um, a, a likely prospect because Avatar hadn't been released, it was just about to be released. Um, and when people saw what you could do with 3D, uh, obviously a lot of people rushed into it, some successful, some um, not so successful. Uh, and we discussed it for the previous film and partly we didn't feel we had time to deliver in um, to, to, to a sufficiently high standard, uh, but partly it was a different kind of film and I'm not sure that, um, uh, that 3D would have really helped us tell the story. But with this big operatic um, world that we're uh, creating and inhabiting, it felt very, very um, likely to us that we could use it. It was new to us all, so actually it, it was um, a leap of faith for us, I have to say. Um, but we felt that very likely that we could use 3D to help take the audience or draw the audience into the world rather than have the world come out at the audience. And Hogwarts wasn't seen very much in Deathly Hallows Part 1, but takes, very much takes centre stage in um, Part 2. And I just wondered how you describe the experience of seeing those beautiful sets like the Great Hall just reduced to piles of rubble. Well, it was both exciting and alarming, actually, uh, because uh, obviously we've seen these, you know, Dumbledore's office and the Great Hall and many sets right from the early days of the franchise. Um, and so it is kind of fun and cool to see them um, destroyed. Uh, but at the same time, you walk in and see that after you know, a weekend where um, the Great Hall had, had a huge section taken out of it, a load filled with rubble and the windows broken, all, and you walk in and think, oh, you know, what's happened here? It was actually kind of... Um, not quite upsetting, but actually it was unsettling at times. But it's fun in the end because uh, I think we were doing something that no one's seen before. Uh, they haven't in these films. They haven't seen the sets in this kind of condition, uh, and I think they'll enjoy it because it's it's part of the storytelling. And um, Harry Potter has, of course, been the most financially successful franchise in, in movie history. But I think perhaps more significantly than that, I think it's going to be one that's cherished by many generations to come. And I just wondered now that you're sort of putting the series behind you, how would you like it to be regarded by the world, really? Uh, well, I just hope that actually future generations will find um, at least some of the same sense of enjoyment that the current generation have found. Uh, and that it's uh, we, we're leaving something behind that has some um, sort of lasting value. Uh, that's what I hope. <laughs> and there's obviously a saying in show business, but there are no small parts and only small actors. And I think that's very much something that I felt when I was watching this, because um, we, we do get to see a lot of very familiar faces return, and some of which only for a brief moment, but they all make the most of their screen time, don't they, David? <laughs> they do indeed, and actually it was really important to us to bring as many people back as we possibly could, some who we haven't seen for you know, quite a few films. Um, and everyone was really enthusiastic. They really sort of just jumped straight in and wanted to be there for, to be part of the end. Actors who normally would demand, you know, a huge amount of screen time and a very significant part, uh, they came just to, be, just to be there. It was really um, uh, nice and enjoyable for us all. David Barron, thanks very much. My pleasure.